episode of Wiggy Reviews. Today we're going to go into the magical world of magic. There's going to be witches, vampires, demons, and magic. Are you excited? Because I'm excited. And so let's just stop this all excitement right now and just hop right into it. We are going to be reviewing A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. A Discovery of Witches is the first book in Deborah Harkness's All Souls trilogy, All Souls trilogy, uh, and it follows the story of Diana Bishop. Diana Bishop is a, a, a witch who is part of a very powerful family, the Bishop family. Uh, her parents were two very powerful witches, and she, but due to their death when she was at a, when she was very young, she kind of feels like magic was the cause, and therefore she wants nothing to do with magic. Uh, she was raised by her aunt. Uh, Sarah Bishop, who tried to teach her magic, but she never really, Diana never really got very far with it, like she always had trouble with it, and she just decided she wanted, no, she wanted nothing to do with it, she wanted no magic to be any part of her life, uh, she wanted to earn her degrees and go through college without the use of magic, and she became a, a college professor, and so she she's... Basically, we're coming into a point of her life where she's studying for a paper that she wants that she wants to get published and all this, and she's studying alchemy, uh, and that's part of her degree. So she, the start of the book, is her finding a book, uh, the Ashmole Seven Eight Two, uh, the, and the only reason she pulled it up was because it had something to do with alchemy. But she doesn't really know about the book; no one really knows about it. Uh, but she does realize right away that the book has magical properties and that it is a magic item that was that has a lot of power in it so she kind of explores it a little bit but since she's so much she really wants to put her magic behind her and just kind of cut it out of her life completely she sends the book back unbeknownst to her this sets off a whole chain reaction of other creatures coming to where she is and coming around and they're wondering how was she able to find the book? We could never find the book, but she just called it right up out of the library. How did... What's going on? Who is this woman? Uh, and through this, she meets the vampire Matthew Claremont. Yes. A vampire. Yes, there are vampires, witches, and demons in this universe. And she realizes that everyone's kind of coming around her because of the book and she doesn't understand why and she's like I don't know why like she like Matthew Claremont is really the only one she communicates with fully uh just because she wants answers and all this stuff so they kind of start a relationship kind of at first it's the, it's kind of the normal relationship where like he wants something from her she just wants answers they don't like each other at first they are a little wary of each other at first uh but as they spend more and more time together they start to uh, a, a stronger relationship kit is ignited and blah, 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 everything you've heard before, they fall in love. Anyways. <laughs> uh, but everything kind of focuses around this book and they don't really know what it is. There's rumors that it's like the book of life that has information about the origin of all creatures, humans, vampires, witches, demons, and all that. So everyone's kind of everyone's kind of after it because they want to know what's inside it. They think there's like they could grant whoever reads it vast amounts of power, and so people start to become very hostile about it because they want this book and they don't want it to fall into the hands of their enemies. Now, without giving too much away, basically they discover that their lives Matthew and Diana kind of join forces, and they realize that their lives are in danger because of this book, because of what they know, the what little they know about the book, and the fact that they decide to work together, which is against the rules. Creatures aren't supposed to mingle in any way. Uh, so that starts a whole series of danger coming into their lives, and Diana having to trust her new vampire friend who becomes a lover and having to discover his secrets and him discovering her secrets and re learning things about themselves and her finally accepting her witch her, the, her witch witchy roots. So, <laughs> there is that. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail about the plot because I, I it, it's, you know, it's a typical us versus them kind of situation, but it, 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 it's good. It's not, it's not completely... Uh, You've heard it before, but it's still interesting. It keeps your attention, which is all you can ever hope for in these kinds of books. Uh, anyways, uh, so let's let's just jump right into the character dissection. Diana Bishop is a independent 
strong woman. She's a professor at, I believe, Oxford. Anyway, she's an independent woman who has a degree in alchemical studies, history, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, her main focus being alchemical history and that kind of and that kind of stuff. Uh, she's uh, she is a strong character. I appreciate that she consciously has made a decision to cut this thing out of her life, but she still kind of hangs on to it, even if she doesn't really realize that she does, because she does use it her magic for small things. I, I think I mentioned that before. Um, so it's interesting to see her like using those and realizing that she can't deny who her who she really is, who the blood the blood in her veins. She can't deny it. She has to accept it eventually. Um, but her as a character. I mean, she like I said, she's she's a strong character. Uh, I feel like there were points during the book where she kind of lost her strength in a, in random ways. Like it was like kind of out of left field occasionally, where she would just suddenly become not the damsel in distress, but she would she would kind of start falling into the you know what the typical female characters, if there is such a thing as that, but some people claim there are. Um, but she does, she does become strong after those moments, so I think it kind of, ba she kind of is a balanced character. Like, she's a well-balanced character, I think. Uh, and then Matthew Claremont, the vampire, he is also a professor, but I mean, he's been a professor for numerous periods of his life. Because uh, he's been alive for over 1,500 years? 15,000 years? He's very old. How about that? Da -da! <laughs> he's a vampire. Lives forever. Immortality. All that. Um, but he, his main focus is uh, is uh, blood studies. Like, he, like, he, like genetics. He, he's very focused on genetics at this point in his life. And trying to discover, like, the genetic codes and what makes... Humans different from witches, witches different from vampires, vampires, demons, all that stuff. So he's really go diving into the blood work and trying to figure that all out. For a noble reason. Like, he he thinks it will help determine why they, why of their, all three of the creatures are dwindling out and there are so few of them left. And also to figure out why, how they came to be. He Basically, that's his interest in the Ashmole 782 is he wants to know if it contains the, the secret to how all the creatures came to be. Did they all share a similar ancestor? Are they a mutation in the blood? What are they? How did they come into being? Um, and at first he, he just views Diana as, as a as a pawn to get what he wants, but he under but he but not so much that he's using her without her knowledge. Like he is pretty forthcoming a little bit with what he wants. He's like, I want the book because I want because I want what's inside it and all that. Um, and he discovers fairly quickly that he's falling in love with her. Uh, not at first sight. It takes him a few, a couple, a couple weeks instead of a few days. Uh, but he does realize that he has a, he, he's never felt, he's only felt this way about one other person before, which was uh, someone he loved that died in his past a long time ago. So he there's that he's his discovery of that he's falling in love with a witch, which is against the rules, but he's saying, Damned be the rules. I love this woman and all that. And the issues with that and him trying to balance his secrets with her stubborn, independent, strong willedness willingness, willedness. <laughs> so and he like, from, from this first book, I can tell that he has a very interesting and complicated background. He's a tortured soul, as most characters tend to be when they are immortals of any kind. Uh, he has a lot of secrets, and he's French originally, I guess. Yeah, he, well, he, yes, he is French originally, and he has a family. He has a vampire family. He has a mother, a father, brothers, sisters. He even has children. Um... Which is all based on who turned you into a vampire. Like, his mother is the one who turned him into a vampire. His father just happened to be her mate. And her, his brothers are who they turned. And then his his children are who he turned into vampires. And kind of a very interesting take on that. Uh, I mean, it's been talked about before where they consider the ones that they change into... The people that 
they change the vampires are kind of like their children. So it's an it's an idea that's been played with before, but this kind of takes it into the next level. Like there's actually a hierarchy. Like everyone does consider this family to be a family. Like the father is in charge, and he can pass on the lineage, the homes, the powers, all that to whoever, whichever son he deems most fitting. Usually the oldest. Um, so th- there's an interesting take in that, in that, and that Diana has to learn all that when due to the dangers that they face in London, which all this all takes place in London. Sorry, Rod, to mention that. Um, due to the dangers that they face in London, they have to go to Matthew's home in France. That is where I have issues with the story a little bit. Um, we meet Matthew's mother. Um, I'm gonna say the name wrong. I don't really know how to pronounce it. I believe it's Isabeau. Isabeau. Y s a b e a u. Isabeau. Isabeau. Um, and she has, she hates witches, because witches tortured her mate and killed him, so we find out that her, that, um, uh, Matthew's father is dead, the vampire father, uh, and she hates, hates witches for that, but he's able to talk her into letting Diana stay, and she kinda becomes tolerant of her, uh, and so we get to see that, his little family side there, and she's an, she's an interesting character, she's ruthless, but also d- elegant in the way that most vampires you would think of are, female vampires at least, uh, but, uh, back to my point of where this is where the story kind of fell for me a little bit, it just, it felt like the action just suddenly, completely got halted, when they went to Septors, like, the reason they went was a great reason, like, or, like, I didn't have a problem with the reason why they went there, uh, that was, like, that had enough tension, and, like, you know, it made you really, like, want them, like, you have to escape, that's a great place, you should go, be safe, blah, 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 but once they got there, everything just kind of slowed down, the action stopped, like, the whole point was that they're trying to get this book so that other people don't get it before them, but then they discover that there's, they can't call the book back up for whatever reason, and there's all this this stuff about them talking about, well, now we have to come up with a new plan. And then they just kind of hang out for a while at Septours. That is their home, Septours. And it just... I don't know. It just it felt like a different book all of a sudden. Like, it became kind of a family drama instead of this action... Adven- this kind of, like, action fantasy that it had been in the first part of the book. Uh, we discover new things about Diana's powers as a witch, we discover the secrets that her fam- that her parents kept from her, and we discover that it's her powers are slowly awakening, becoming stronger, and they don't know how, she doesn't know how to control it because no one was able to teach her how to control it because she couldn't, she couldn't master the simplest spells when she was a kid, so now they have to figure out how are we going to teach you these, these spells, you have to learn how to control your magic, and then there was like this random scene where Matthew had to go back to London for some reason like there was some disaster I I can't even remember because it was so brief uh that he had to go back and there was like this worry of oh my gosh uh, I'm so worried he's maybe he'll maybe it's a trap maybe he'll and then he comes back and everything's fine and we just don't talk about it again like it was like what what was the point of that except to like it, it 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 showed off a new magical power by Diana that she had that she didn't know she had. So I guess that was the point of it, was to show off this magic. But it's like, could you not have done it in a different way that made a little more sense and wasn't just kind of a stop sign in, in the action of the story? It, it, it felt, it was, like I said, I can't even remember what the, the emergency was that he had to leave because it just was so such a short, pfft, it happened so quickly and there was like, I, I, it was pointless to me. Uh, there could have been, I think she could have done a better way of showing off this growing power inside her. And then, and then a little later we get more of the action, and that is good, and it was brilliant. Like, she's really good at writing these action scenes, and writing these, uh, these, like, tense moments where you don't know how they're gonna get out of it, you don't know how it's gonna happen, and she's able to introduce characters pretty well. Like, there's a lot of characters in the book, that, in the first book, that you meet, and she introduces them very well, so you don't get confused, like, oh, God, <laughs> who's this? There's three people with M, M names, and I go, but you're able to keep them apart. Uh, like, there's Matthew's son, Marcus, and Miriam, who's also part of the family. I can't, they never officially said that she was his daughter, but I, I assumed that she is. Um, and then there is Matthew's older brother, Baldwin, who comes storming in, and he's a big powerhouse character that is just like, ah, I'm gonna, I'm, the, I'm the head of the family, why don't you talk to me? Uh, so there's that added 
drama into it. And then Isabeau, again, is very well written. She's ruthless, but elegant. I'm going to keep saying that about her. And then they decide, okay, we have to help Diana learn control of her magic. How do we do this? Uh, well, how about we send her back to her aunts? Because they are witches, and they after, after all, so they could teach her. So they go to Madison, which is where she was born and grew up uh, in Pennsylvania, Madison, Pennsylvania. And she brings Matthew with her and has to explain to her aunts why she is canoodling with a vampire. And after the initial anger, they realize that she Diana's in trouble and her aunts agree to help to try to teach her more magic. And again, as with her when she was a kid and a teenager, she can't pick it up. She has trouble with it. She doesn't understand why she can't do it, even the simplest spells and all this stuff. And there's the stress of that. And then... You know, one thing leads to another, and they all find out that the people who are after the books are know where they are and are going to come and want and are giving them warnings like you have to stop this, you have to break up, you have to you can't be together, and you have to give us the book or else. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so they decide that in order to be completely safe, they can't be anywhere where the people, the the group, the group that's after them is. Which leads me to what I forgot to mention before in our character study is the people who are after them. The people who are after them are the congregation, which is kind of a council that is made up of two witches, two vampires, and two demons. And they meet and they discuss rules and they're the ones who decided that the creatures can't mix, can't be together, like vampires can't date witches, witches can't date any demons, demons, vampires, blah, 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 blah. They're the ones who made the rules, and they're the ones who kind of watch over, and they make sure creatures don't get involved in politics, make sure they don't try to take over the world, they say we have to keep everything quiet, we can't come out to the humans, because they'll kill us, all that stuff. So they discover where Diana and Matthew are, and they the threats just keep coming in, and they realize we can't be anywhere where they can find us. And through... Mm, I'm, I'm gonna say another kind of negative that was just negative for me, and I it's one of those things where... It, it, the thing I had a problem with most through the book, besides that one part in the, in the with them in Matthew's home, is that she tends to use a lot of deus ex machina. And if you know what that means, you know it's bad enough when you use it once. When you use it a bunch of times, it just becomes freaking annoying. Uh, it's like, well, then what's the point of being worried? Because we know she's just going to write something in that's going to save everyone. So that happens, and they discover that Diana can time travel, time walk. And they decide the safest place for them is to go to the past. And that is the end of the first book. I know I don't usually go into spoilers, but I have I've decided I'm going to do the entire trilogy reviews. Uh, so I figure I might as well lead into my next review, which will be the second book, which is called, uh, a no Shadow of, Shadow of Night, Shadow of Night. Um, so I will be reviewing that in my next video, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So they decide they have to time to walk and travel back in time. And then that's kind of the book. Those are the main characters you need to know about kind of, uh, there are a bunch of others, uh, including the co the congregation, who I cannot pronounce any of their names, so we shall wait until they become more of a role. They had a small part in, in it, uh, one in particular who, a witch named Peter Knox, uh, but I feel like I've already thrown enough information at you. Um, so let me just get right down to more of my critiquing of it. Like I said, the constant things just happening that just happened to work out was a little annoying and it just kind of felt <sighs> not like poor writing but it was just it was that she used it so much like things just happened to work out things just magically worked out oh this information just magically appeared and now we know this stuff and everything's okay and like I said it's, it's bad enough when they use it once for like a huge thing but it, it, it was used quite a lot in this book and I don't know I I'm it's one thing if you can write it in a way where it 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 fits and it's not as obvious that's what's happened but there were a couple times where it was very obvious that it was just written in that way to be that way to make it work um and 
like I said, that part in France when they went back to Matthew's home, that part just, it, it dragged. It dragged during that part, even though there were exciting moments in it, like the discovery of Matthew's secrets and learning about him and learning about the vampires and all that stuff. That was interesting, but it just felt... Like, there was nothing else going on, and you were just thinking the whole time, like, aren't you trying to find this book? You've forgotten what you're doing? You're trying to find this book and get it away from people. Why are you not paying attention to this? This has become, like, back in background noise to you. Um, so, uh, that's, that's, that's that. That is that. Uh, so, I mean, like, I, the actions, the action scenes were well written, there was some cheesy dialogue that you just kind of uh, sit there and you're like, oh, okay. Uh, but, I mean, I love, the Diana character was very strong, I mean, except for her few weak moments. Uh, Matthew Claremont is an interesting character just because of his secrets, and I'm, I'm a little worried that there may be too many revealed in too short of a time. Because uh, they revealed a few in this one, but I feel like there's a lot more that are going to be coming. And it's going to be frustrating at how much they're throwing at me. But we shall see when I get through the second book. Um, yeah, so I'll just get right to my, my scoring. For the first book of the All Souls trilogy, uh, Discovery of Witches, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a, a 7. 7 out of 10. Like, and let me be frank. <laughs> The parts that I liked, I really, really liked. The part, it, it just bothers me when action is slowed down to such a point where you're screaming at the characters, Do you even know what you're doing anymore? Have you forgotten what you're doing here? Like, you came here to escape these people, but you still wanted to try to find a way to get this book, and they just never really focused on that. So, it, that, and then the few moments where, Oh, magically, we, oh, look! I found the answer to our problem. It just happened to be in this book I found. Uh, like, I, I'm hoping she gets better about it in the next books. We shall, I'll see. Um, I am going to go through all three of the books. I want to review all three of the books. Um, so, there we go. 7 out of 10 for A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness from me. Uh, the next review will be the second book. Uh, oh, Night of, Night, just Night. Shadow of Night. I don't know why I can't get that straight. Shadow of Night. Um, so look for that. I'm sure I'll have a lot of opinions about that because I know anytime a book time travels, that another issue with those kinds of things is always will the history bog down the story? Will her trying to show off how much research she did ultimately make the story less interesting? We'll find out. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so thank you for watching. Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. If you can get over things that bothered me, it's a recommendation. Uh, I, it's very well received otherwise, so I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy and I'm just very particular about my books. But, it, I mean, whatever. Everyone has particular books, their opinions. Uh, so, yeah. I will see you next time for uh, Shadow of Night, which I will remember the title by the time I do it. Uh, Shadow of Night. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.